Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be solving Revenge CTF from Try Hack Me and we're going to be taking a look at everything that we have to do in that challenge. So before we begin, I just want to say thank you for 900 subscribers. It's an amazing number and thank you so much and let's get started. So I'm going to switch right here to my Cali Linux machine and as you can see right here, I already downloaded a file that we had a message from Billy Joel which basically says make sure that you do this and do that in the, in the challenge itself. So when you download it, you get a text file which says this, to whom you may concern, what do you have to do in order to finish the challenge the right way, to finish the job. So as you can see right here, it says do not bring down the site, uh, instead you just have to deface it. So what that means is just change something in the HTML file, uh, you know, change it up a little bit. And we're going to get to that. There's nothing really important that we need to read right here. So I'm going to just close this. I don't really need this. And we're going to go switch back to the machine. And I already started it. And we have the IP right here. So we're going to get into that. So the first thing we're going to do, obviously, is we're going to run the MAP scan. And let's paste the IP right here. And we're going to run the scan and make sure that the IP is actually up. So that the server ran. And as you can see right here, it does seem to be running. So we have Rubber Ducky Incorporated right here. It seems to be a website of something. We have products right here. If you browse the products right here, you can see that they have all sorts of stuff. We have some links interesting one, two, and three, and four. These seem to be products. Let's see. And yeah, that they are products and they're they have numbers. This is an interesting thing. So as you can see, there's nothing special on this web app. We don't seem to have anything that we can use here. But we do have some sort of a login. We have some people right here that we can write down. Uh, we have the web support at rubberduckyinc.org, some address and stuff like that. Let's take a look at the page source to see if we have any hidden code. And as you can see, it doesn't seem to be anything special here. If we take a look at the products, same thing, regular contact, nothing special. We have a login here, which might be useful. So we're going to take that into consideration. This seems to be interesting that we have some products. We can try to SQL inject this, but we're going to get to that later. Yeah, I don't see anything that could be useful right here. Here for now we have FTP and SSH so I'm gonna guess that we can't log into SSH if I do a scan for all the ports and on the other side I'm gonna do the same thing oh, actually I'll do I'll scan the port and let's say 22 and 80 and give me an SV scan I want to see what we're dealing with right here although I already know that this is gonna be open SSH so there's not gonna be anything to exploit here but I can just run the scan for no reason just to show you guys so we can also run oh let me just clear this up pseudo go bust go buster so obviously always try to run GoBuster instead of the derp because it's faster. I'm going to paste the IP, add the protocol and say, we don't have to do a slash here, it doesn't matter. And we're going to do command.txt. So let's run this. And let's see if we can find anything, you know, any, any sort of uh, sites that we want to use. So we have slash admin, but from what I remember when I was first solving this challenge, if I go here, we actually have the same thing. So it's just an admin login. But we're gonna write this down just in case. We might need this later. Uh, let's do Nikto. So let's run Nikto on this one. Pseudo Nikto and host. And paste this right here. Let's take a look. Sorry. And let's leave it running. Let's see what else do we have. Xcross is written. This is nothing basically. Um, we have index login, contact admin, nothing special. Products, we've already seen that. Uh, let's run big.txt just in case. And I, but I don't think we're going to find anything. If we have the SSH and the FTP, we can brute force the login. But the problem is, we don't even know the... Yeah, it's open SSH. There's no way we're going to hack that. So 7.6... Uh, I, I don't think we can... You can just run... Um, if you're not sure if you can hack something, you, just, you can just run a search split. Uh, or you can, you know, search exploit DB. It's whatever. It's the same thing. Um, so uh, there we go. Okay, so we have the user enumeration for a less than 7. We have 7.9. Wait, sorry. No. We have 76B1, so this is user enumeration should work for this one. So we, we could find something here. We can find users there, so that's pretty good. I can run Metasploit for this, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, exit out of this. I don't need this anymore. We have an admin page. We know that. This is going to scan forever. And this is not saying anything. Now, I'm going to assume that we can find some users. Uh, although I already did solve this challenge, I'm going through it right now because I don't remember. It's been a couple of weeks. Uh, I do remember that we have to do SQL injection and we're going to get to that later. But I want to show you guys that usually you have to check out if we can find usernames. It's it's just an easier option to maybe brute force it. I don't know. I don't really see any users here. Maybe web support, but I don't think so. Uh, we have the CEO, CFO, Johnny, I don't know. So we don't have any posts. Let's actually open every product. Okay, so we have some products in stock. It's a box of duckies. A dozen of duckies. Pallet and a truckload. Okay. So as you can see, GoBuster is not giving me anything. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to 
add the products and see if there's maybe anything hidden in the products. So, uh, but I don't think so. Or maybe an admin. Copy that. And let me just fix this up a little bit. We're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna do the, do it for admin. So let's open a new tab, go buster, and let's do admin. Okay. Just to show you guys how it's usually done. So you, you would search for everything. Let's see. Let's first see Nikto. Yeah, it doesn't seem like he found anything. Oh, okay. So whoa. Okay, I didn't see that products. We have zero one. Where's that? I didn't see that. 404 okay so another thing that we can do is as you can see we're not getting any special results right here we have the ID that could be interesting let's see products ID okay so it just redirects to product number one so what we can do is we can stop this for example and we can actually go back to where we were and we can add uh, the extension for for example so let's X and let's add PHP uh, I don't know, txt, um, I don't know, html, whatever. So let's take a look. And it's going to find uh, everything with these extensions. So as you can see, our map scan for all the ports doesn't say anything else. So that's definitely the case. We have to hack HTTP. Nikto is not giving us anything else. And so after a little bit of digging, a little bit of go buster, uh, I just noticed that we actually found something, the requirements.txt. So it was a text file, as I specified before, we were searching for text files. And we found this. However, I needed to provide the big.txt to it instead of common.txt, which is fine. I just it just took a second for me, and then it found it. So all we have to do is enter the file, and as you can see right here, we have some weird stuff. Now I personally know that this is uh, for pip, so uh, this is basically Python. And as you can see right here, we have py mysql, so we have an SQL running, and we have SQL alchemy. But as you can see right here, we have Flask, so this is a Flask server. It's for Python. One thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use these products right here that we have, and we can actually specify any of the products. It doesn't really matter copy this and drop this right to the uh, SQL map and as you can see right here we've filled up the thing so all you have to do is run SQL map provide the URL and then provide current DB so what this will do is it will make sure that it finds what current database we're using now we know what we're using but uh, let's say yes on this one we know what we're using but we want to make sure that the uh, SQL map knows and we want to make sure that it tests the right things for the database that it finds are you sure you want to continue further testing yes to be honest if you're doing SQL map for try hacking or stuff like that or CTF you can just uh, say yes to everything more or less so it seems like it's MySQL. Uh, do you want to skip? So yeah, we basically asked, do you want to make sure that we use this DBMS? And we're going to say yes. We're going to say yes again. So, and now it's going to start testing. Now it's going to try to find some vulnerabilities, what you can use to extract information and stuff like that. Now it's going to ask us, do you want to retry with the union? We're going to say, yeah, sure, why not? Uh, injection not exploitable with null values. Do you want to try a random integer? Yeah, sure, why not? So we could have said no to some of these. I don't think it's really necessary, but that's fine. As you can see right here, it says that it's injectable. A URL parameter is one vulnerable do you want to keep testing the others we're going to say no we don't have to test the others and as you can see right here we have some results so this is pretty cool we have current database is ducky inc so now what we're going to do is run the same command but we're going to say capital d uh, ducky inc and we're going to say tables and now let's take a look do you want to test the URI itself yeah sure and there we go so we have the system user user and the product so now what we're going to do is we're going to select one of these tables to extract the data from now let's take a look at the table user i'm going to say table user i'm going to say a which means dump all and we're going to say yes sure so now we are getting some password hash right here so we have password hashes for some users this is not a valid password hash that can be used here it does seem that these are not valid but we have a root password here so i might i don't know i might write this down i don't know uh do you want to sort hashes to temper no we don't want to start that so do you want to perform a dictionary based attack no we're not going to do that so so what we're doing right now is we're not reading the tables yet so right now we're just reading who has what permissions and what users do we have or similar pretty cool stuff we can extract a lot of information from this and as you can see right here we actually found the table with information and it seems to be HTML and stuff like that just as it said on the website so this is pretty cool nothing special but we have something interesting right here and if we take a look at it we have the s admin so it's a server admin username and we have these other usernames so we're gonna copy these username we're gonna need that so let's copy that and let's paste them into our text editor thing so this looks like a mess but I'm just gonna expand it let's see what else do we have and as you can see we have some information right here uh, some other users we have fake ink evil corp and as you can see right here we have something it seems to be a flag and I'm gonna take a look at that further right down here 
and as you can see it is a flag so breaking and entering so let's copy that let's see if that's valid let's go back to our try hack me paste it right here and as you can see it's valid so now we need flag 2 we probably get flag 2 when we hack into the machine so can we log into this login uh, i don't know maybe let's take a look at what we have for these server admins and stuff like that so one thing that i wanted to show you is every time you have a hash and you're not sure you know what to do with it or something you can just copy this and by the way let's try to you know uh, crack the admins password might as well you know because we're already there why go from user when we can go from admin so so for this we're going to use hashcat all you have to do is write hashcat hashes and just enter the first link and as you can see right here we have all sorts of hashes what we're going to do is we're going to control f and we're going to paste in our hash and as you can see these things are different but that's probably like some kind of a salt thing or whatever and if we slide back we have only one matching and that seems to be this bcrypt or bycrypt or whatever it's read so that means we have 3 and 200 and that's what we're going to use on hashcat so sudo hashcat and uh, let's run help for now and as you can see it gave us a couple of examples so we can write the thing to the file sudo nano to crack txt and uh, let's paste this so we're going to use sadmin i'm going to copy this paste it hashcat let's say m specify this number right here so 3200 there we go we can go with a and we're gonna say i don't know we, we need our file so to crack.txt and we're gonna need the rocky.txt or something like that so do i have rocky here i don't a user share world list rocky okay okay we forgot a so let's brute force here there we go but for me as you can see it actually cracked it right now right away but don't worry if you run the same command it's gonna crack it for you uh, since it's already ran it and it's cracked it it just stored it into a pod file so now i can actually just read it so there's no need for me to crack it again so as you can see we can actually get the password so i'm gonna copy this i'm gonna write this down so we have server admin and this password so now the first thing that i thought to myself oh this is great i can actually log into the website and what i did was i went to the admin login and to the regular login and i tried to you know log in but as you can see so server admin and i tried to log in with that password if i do and i try it's not gonna work what, what do i do now but as you can see we have ssh as well so i was like well you know it could be that so what i did was sudo ssh server admin at and we need the ip we pop this bad boy in it's gonna say yeah and it's gonna ask us for the password we have the password and we're just gonna provide the password and as you can see right here we're in so we just actually hacked in so this is awesome let's take a look we have a package updates nothing interesting nothing nothing interesting server something been logged it doesn't really matter for us all right this is a cpf challenge let's take a look at ls ls al i accidentally pressed k it doesn't really matter so we have flag 2 that's all we care about so cat flag 2 dot txt and as you can see we have the second flag so let's go back to try hack me and see if that's the right flag and as you can see it is so obviously we want to try to privask uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run sudo l so l and it's going to ask us for the password so this is sometimes not a good sign but let's take a look so as you can see right here we have something so we have root uh, we have system ctl start docky service okay so we're probably gonna have to corrupt the service or something docky service enable the service restart the service reload the daemon sudo edit docky service okay so this could be good this could be good we can run sudo edit so sudo edit this and as you can see we have some stuff right here now first thing we want to do is uh we want to change these users and groups so we want to set this to root root and we want to set this to root root and we want to set the working directory uh sure we can leave that directory uh, exec start we have the g unicorn whatever whatever something main pid okay i'm gonna save this and i'm gonna go back to the cd var www ducking okay and one thing i'm gonna do right now is i'm gonna make sure that i take a look at what we're running there so we have the dot sock so cat Docking sock. Okay, that doesn't seem to work. Let's sudo edit this again. So what I think we can do is we can just ignore this. It doesn't matter what executes here. What matters is we can just we, we just have to make a file that's gonna be a reverse shell for us. So I can comment this out. So um if we reload, if we stop, it doesn't really matter. So exec start. Uh, I'm gonna use I'm actually gonna use temp uh temp and I don't know uh x.sh uh, the working directory has to be changed as well so let's change that to let's say yeah install multi-user i don't think we need to change anything from that network.target this seems fine so let's save this uh and now we're good so now we're gonna go to temp and uh, the reason i put it in temp is because we can make files there so sudo nano uh, x.sh 
oh sorry nano x.sh so so now we need a regular uh reverse shell so uh, as you can remember it looks something like this oh yeah i think i actually forgot one thing wait wait, wait. so okay so one thing that i forgot is i actually tried to run this but i can't run it like this i, I need to run bin bash all right so like this okay so that's good and now we can actually nano x.sh and we can copy the yeah this one netcat okay good so we're gonna copy the regular netcat thing and we're gonna paste it right here i just want to make sure that i change the ip so if i take a look at my ip it's right here 1337 leave this the way it is copy this and let's paste this right here let's see if everything's all right it does seem to be we want to save changes sure and let's try to mod x.sh Okay, that worked, perfect. So now we have to rerun everything, the services and everything, so the daemon reloads. But before that, we're gonna run netcat, uh, lfp1337, so we're ready. If something happens, you know, if this works. To run this, we need to use basically every command that we have uh, allowed for us, so uh, sudo l. And as you can see, it says we have the start of the service, we have the enable, we have the restart, and we have daemon reload. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to reload it. So let's do a reload. Oh, it asks us for the password, of course. So what we have to do is sudo u root and like that. Okay, and now that, that works, perfect. So now it didn't ask us for the password. And now we're going to enable it. Paste this right here. sudo u root. And now we're going to start it. Uh, start ducky inc service. And if we start it and if we get a reverse shell, it's fine. But we didn't get a reverse shell. However, don't be afraid. So this is just one of the things that doesn't work and that's fine. We're going to modify our uh, x.sh to be something else. We're going to figure it out. Uh, so x.sh, let's take a look. So this didn't work. So let's remove this line, uh, control K. And one thing that we can do, one thing we can do is we can use bin bash. So bin bash, and then we can copy bin bash to temp right here and call it bash and on top of that we can actually add schmod 47 sorry 4755 for our temp bash so what we basically did is we copied the bash file and we copied it to the temp so we can use it so it's a, it's, it's going to create a new file or to be more precise it's going to copy it. but since it's going to run it as root we're going to have something really good right there so we're going to hope that that works but in order to run this we actually have to do another uh restart for this so sudo l and, and we're not going to need this anymore because we're not going to get a shell like this sudo u root start so as i said before we need to reload the daemon enable the service and then we're gonna start the service. Perfect. So now we should have, so now as you can see, nothing is happening. So all, all we can do is we can actually restart the service just in case. I don't know, maybe that's it. Sudo so u root. So let's use the restart, copy that, paste this in. That was a horrible paste, so service. So now, um, I don't know, I think we're actually fine. So let's take a look. Okay, so we actually have a bash file now. Now we're not gonna run it regularly. What we're gonna do is we're gonna run it with p. We're gonna run it with bash. So there we go, and now if we run who am I, we're root. Easy as that. So what we did is basically we made a new file. We made a root process make a new file for us through the system control, and now we have root. So if I take a look at everything that we have right here, if we go to root, we're not going to find a flag right here. And I was confused at this uh, firstly, but there's a hint that says uh, check out the uh, mission's objective. So what we have to do is we have to, you know, modify the HTML file somehow. So what I did is I went nano uh, bar www ducky inc and what was the, I think it was index.html. I'm not sure. So let's see the into that. Oh yeah, static. So this is Flask, I forgot. So uh, it was templates. So nano index.html and let's deface it. Let's just write anything into it. So I don't know. We're gonna write uh, instead of rubber ducky ink, we're gonna say foxcorp hack easily. Perfect. So now I modified it. If I go back to root and I have the flag, that's it. That's basically it. So it was set up for us like that. So we have the flag only when we uh, deface the website. So when we copy the flag, let's see if that's the flag. If I paste it right here, it works. And we actually hacked the machine. That was awesome. So there we go. That was a really interesting challenge. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Thank you so much for watching and make sure you leave your questions in the comments. I always try to answer them as soon as I can. And thank you so much for 900 subscribers. Thank you so much for watching and have an amazing day.